Welcome to the Dead Mall tour of Fair Oaks Mall in Columbus, Indiana. The Fair Oaks Mall opened just in 1990 and has already entered Dead Mall status. We will begin our tour over by the Carson Perry Scott Wing. And as we can see in Carson's court, things aren't doing too well. This Carson's was originally an elder beerman, and closed in 2018 when the Carson Peary Scott Company chain was liquidated by their co parent company, the Bonton Stores Incorporated. This store took the recently truncated Carson's name back after 2012 when Bonton decided to rebrand all of their stores in the Detroit area along with Indiana to the Carson's name. Now, as we could see in Carson's court, the mall is still very well maintained. It's clean and there's even Christmas decorations up. And this is because the city of Columbus, Indiana actually owns this mall and has put a lot of effort into maintaining it due to the fact that they want to redevelop it with a more community-oriented focus. Essentially, the plan is to tear out all of these vacant stores, including the nightlife boutique as seen there, and replace them with things that the community can use. Yes, there will still be retail, but it will be on a much smaller scale. As we can see, the majority of the inline tenants of this mall are vacant, except for a couple of mom and pops that have popped up where national chains used to reside. I will say walking down towards Carson's, where there is just about nothing left, is extremely airy, and the aura that this mall puts off is definitely something interesting. As you can see up by the ceiling, what was originally neon lights have been replaced with blue LEDs. I'm sure it would have been a sight to see in pure 90s nostalgia to see the neon lights in full glow. Up on the left, you could see Bath & Body Works, which is very odd, but Bath & Body Works tends to hold on at dying malls. In fact, we could see that it is one of the busiest stores in the mall and in the area and tends to attract shoppers down to the center court of the mall, which can be seen here with a very stunning atrium. Coming back through here, we can see what appears to be a fourth anchor pad, but is actually just Cumming, Cummins Inc. offices. The city of Columbus is a manufacturing town that has the world headquarters for the Cummins Corporation, who manufactures motors. Columbus is also known for its stunning architecture and plan downtown. It makes it one of the most unique communities in, in southern Indiana, and while the Indiana manufacturing has fallen off, Columbus is still thriving as a community. In fact, this entire area back here has already been redeveloped offices years ago, which is a trend that we're seeing in malls today. However, when you're walking through, it does feel a little weird to just have the mall dead end here in what should look like it used to be an anchor. But we can see that this is just a small portion of the mall, and it directly counters the J.C. Penney wing, which we're heading in towards now. J.C. Penney has been vacant for a few years now. However, you could see someone walking through in there. That is because it was being used for testing for the current ongoing global catastrophe and health scare that we have right now. And you can see the J.C. Penney label scar is still very apparent when it comes towards it. And you can see that the lights are on and that the JCPenney court, while not as stunning as Carson's, was once very impressive and filled with shops. However, right now, the only shop in this center part of the mall is Bath & Body Works. Heading away from the center court, we're heading towards the Dunham Sports. This is a relatively new addition to the mall, and the Dunham Sports anchor was originally occupied by Kmart. Kmart, of course, has been dying for years. And when they closed, the mall decided to bring in a new tenant, Dunham Sports. To the right, we can see a shoe store, which actually replaced Payless and has a very similar sign as the discount shoe stores. Now, coming up towards the other center court of the ball, it's a weird setup where there are two. We can see that this area actually does have some tenants, including two food options. To the right of this shot is a Mexican restaurant, and to the left is one of the other mom and pops, which is called Nirvana, which is one of those hippie stores that you see put up in malls. Now, of course, I'm not critiquing these. I enjoy looking around, but it always seems weird that every mall has one. And as you can see, even though Dunham's is a major draw, there is no mall entrance. You have to leave the mall and then go back out. Now, we're just looking at the opposite way, heading away from Dunham's and towards the Carson Peary Scott Anchor. Throughout our time at the mall, we actually did stop and talk to a janitor who told us about his job and how the city wants to redevelop it. It truly is a shame that a mall that was built only in 1990 
31 years ago has already fallen into such disrepair. Here's to hoping that the city of Columbus is going to make good on their promise and make this property something that the community can use once again. Until then, unless you want to go to Bath and Body Works, Dunham's, or Nirvana, or just want to look around an old mall, frankly, there's nothing there for you. What killed this mall, frankly, was the Indiana Premium Outlets just up 65. While it may not have a future as an enclosed mall, we can hope that this mall will have a brighter day ahead as it becomes used for the community in the vibrant city of Columbus, Indiana.